Okay, so what's good, tribe? You know, I've been thinking about it, and I got enough people that are interested in hearing my story. I'm going to tell my story from the beginning. And when I say the beginning, I'm going to be talking back to, you know, uh, wallabies and corduroys and button top, uh, you know, crazy ass. I'm talking about dress code, you know what I mean? This is how we got down back then. And, uh, you know... I was a little white kid with long hair, uh, little greasy kid, you know, dirty little kid, basically, you know, uh, like I said, I, I had some trouble at home, and I'm going to explain all that as we go. So, basically, I started out in Burbank, okay, and I was just a pup pup. Like I said, back then, it was wallabies and corduroys and collared, t big old collared uh, button-up shirts, and... I didn't fit in, man, when I moved in over there. Right from the gate, I didn't fit in. Because right back then, they wore winos. You know, they were little $5 winos, their shoes. Uh, you know, they wore khakis. They wore uh, Ben Davis. Um, you know, and then even the T-shirt brands were different back then, you know. Um, that's how it was in the neighborhood. And I move in and I, I'm dressed like I am. I got greasy hair. I listen to heavy metal. Um, Black Sabbath was big, Ozzy, you know, like that's what my get down was back then, just as a young pup. And as I said, I didn't fit in right from the gate. You know what I mean? There was a clique called BTR back then, Burbank 13 Reefer, uh, Tres A Reefer, I guess it, it was. And I didn't know, understand all that shit. You know what I mean? All I knew was that, uh, you know, uh, everyone would always tell me, hey, man, you, you fight one bean, you eat, the, you fight the whole burrito. You know what I mean? And I didn't get all that. I didn't understand all that racist shit back then. Um, but it sure came. Let me tell you, it came. And, you know, you're a kid, man. You, fighting's part of the process, right? So this is what happened. So uh, we're living in Burbank. Uh, we're kicking it at the house one night, and... There's a, a drunk driver hits like five cars across the street. <laughs> you know, and this is a pretty active neighborhood back then. And, you know, everyone's running outside to see what's going on and shit. And, you know, the drunk driver's all trying to get away and shit. And uh, I'm not tripping. I'm thinking, go, he didn't hit my cars. You know what I mean? I couldn't stand the dude whose dad's car he did hit. So, like I said, he racked up about five cars at the time. And, uh... Anyway, uh, I was voting for him to get away back then, you know, and the, he didn't get away. They ran, they grabbed his ass and whatever, and, and the, one of the kids that I couldn't stand, he's all holding his leg and, you know, like, just stupid shit, but I get it, you know what I mean? Now I get it, you know, you don't want your family to get fucked over, you want to get the guys that got your shit, right? So, a uh, couple days go by, and... Somebody, one of the older kids called him a rat, you know what I mean, in front of me. And all I did was repeat what he called him, you know what I mean? I didn't get what rat meant and all that shit back then, you know what I mean? And how deep, how deep and rooted it is in some families, those wordings, you know what I mean? Because how the, uh, they were already doing pintos back then, you know what I mean? Real prison, man, real prison. I want you guys to understand, first and foremost, that there was no cameras at every house back then, every ring you know what I mean? Uh, there wasn't every five billion ways to get busted doing what you did. Otherwise, I'm sure I'd be doing five life sentences along with almost everybody I knew back then. And uh, and let me say this. My entire car, the whole ride that I used to cruise with, are fucking dead or doing life. Every single one of us. You know, um, and I should be both. You know what I mean? By all rights, I should be doing both. Um and I'm going to put my story out there, and I'm going to put it on Patreon, and that's going to go to make up for the stories you're going to hear, to, to my payback to the universe, you know. Um, I've been wanting to open a girl's bed now for a minute. Uh, I just got this feeling in my heart that it's the right thing to do, but... Uh, by the way, everybody, I've been blessed. I got my first call out for 33. I went and worked Hollywood Bowl. Just goes to show you, man, if you chase what you're after, you're going to get it. If you go after it every bit as hard as you did the drug or the girl or whatever, you're going to get it, man. 
You're going to achieve it. I could get in my own way and be like, oh, I can't get a job. I'm an ex-con. I'm not. Man, fuck that. You know what I mean? I'm here to thrive. I'm going to enjoy the last of what I got left so I could have a heart attack tonight. You know what I mean? Um, I pray that's not the case. But if it is the case, you know what? I'm okay with myself today. You know, uh, I'm not in a fear of going. I'm not. You know, I faced death so many times that, you know, it's funny being out here on the streets. You see all these level four killers walking around knowing they're all soft as cotton, man. And you don't want to just call them out because one thing's going to lead to another. And I got a saying, man. I've always had this saying. I was talking with Nate Dog today. And, uh, you know, like I ain't saying I'm the best fighter in the world because, like I say, I'm a rough, tough Cocoa Puff, man. But uh, if you win, you're going to wish you hadn't. You know, that's always been my motto. If you win, you're going to wish you hadn't, son. You know what I mean? Because I'm coming 10 full back, you know. Uh, anyway, so back to the story. I just wanted to get, get out there why I'm putting this story out there. And I'm going to start from the beginning. And I'm going to take you all the way through to where we are today, you know. And there's been a... Man, like I said, there was no cameras back then. All that shit. So getting away with shit back then was a whole different thing. And back then, what we used to do was like... Uh, Quaaludes, you know, Lemon Roars, 714s, uh, Sniffing Glue, you know, these were all the, in Burbank, when I kicked it with the essays, uh, that's what we did, we sniffed glue, you know what I mean, and then when I hung out with the white kids when I moved on to Arizona, I'll to explain how I ended up having to move, anyway, this is how it goes, so anyway, I call this dude a rat, basically, and, uh, whatever, one thing leads to another, we're chunking them, and, uh, he dings me up a little bit. I ding him up a little bit. There was no real winner, you know what I mean? Like, we're we're not really big enough to be doing that kind of damage. But uh, some shit happened. And they ended up egging my house, you know. And, you know, my people were getting pissed. Uh, you know, like, you're always getting in fucking trouble, blah, blah, blah. And my dad was coming around at the time. And my stepdad was there. And... Pops, he was an idiot, man. He was, you know, he started off as a devil's, devil's disciple. And uh, so his, like, legacy to me was give me a, a couple boxes of Easy Rider magazines, you know, all from that era. And I was supposed to be cool with that. By the way, I don't, I love riding bikes, but I don't associate with bikers. Um, we're, we don't, we've never kicked it on the inside. Back when I was on the line, they weren't on the line. Um... And it's, you know, I don't have any ill will feelings towards them or anything. Just back then, it was taught to me not to hang. We don't associate with these. We don't associate with those. We don't associate. We don't associate. That's all I remember since ever since I hit the walls was we don't associate, you know. Um, plus, I didn't learn. I just barely started to learn to keep my friggin' mouth shut when I needed to, you know. As you guys know my story, opening my mouth one time, man, cost me... You know, the hugest portion of my life, all the good shit, all the good times, all the, my body's not fucked up yet. Uh, I could still fight, fuck, do whatever, you know, like a 14-year-old. Not that I don't still try, but, uh, that you know, that's, all those years were wasted, man. Burpees, fucking, whole time. Roll up your mat, fucking, when it's no chest, homie, woo, woo. All the shit that I, you know, that's just, just implanted in my head. I was watching Joey's wife today talking about PTSD, you know, and I'm sure I'm working with some. You know what I mean? I don't like to admit it, but I, I'm sure I am. Anyway, I end up... Uh, bombing on this kid again later, what happened was... Me and my homeboy, we're going to jump him now because he's like, oh, and I say homeboy, but we're just kids, man. We're not really homeboys, nothing. We were just two kids, right? And we caught him by himself. We were going to lump him up. He was running and uh, homeboy hadn't really done nothing to him. Sorry about the camera shaking. I'm trying to do this in, in the room. And he's running and he's running towards me, but he's not looking towards me. He's looking behind him, right? And when he does look at me, I whack, hit him as hard as I can. So... What happens next? Like three days after the car crash, our house gets shot up. Because I, I ended up socking this little kid. You know what I mean? A little kid socks another little kid and they end up shooting up my house. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's where it started. So from there, uh, 
my people are like, we got to get him out of here. We got to get him out of here. Um, that's all I ever remember hearing in my whole life is we got to get him out of here, you know. And I ended up moving down t uh, into the Wilshire district with my grandparents. So, mind you, it's, uh, I would like to say predominantly black neighborhood, but it was, you know, the majority black neighborhood. It was just me and like six other white kids at school back then that I remember, you know, and every day at like 10 minutes to three, I'd be like, hey, I got to go to the bathroom every day. And security knew I was jumping the fence and I was getting out of there. I was jamming home, you know, because I'd been caught at the original Carnation right there a couple of times. There's a 7-Eleven across the street. I believe it's still there. I've been caught there a couple of times trying to play pinball after school and, you know, that whole gang mentality shit. The older kids had lumped me up. Back then we had zip guns. Well, it was a pen, you know what I mean? It holds a 22 round. And I started carrying one of those to school, you know? And I remember that one day they were beating the dog shit out of me. They got me, I had waited too long. I was playing Pac-Man and I waited too long. And I looked outside and I seen all this red, red shirts, red bandanas, red pants, red and i was like red equals dead right now man you know i'm fucking through <laughs> i just knew it so i tried mustering up as much courage as i could just stayed playing pac-man and uh this black kid pushes me up off the machine like hey this is this is my game you know I'm like, yeah all right you know so i'm thinking i should just cause a scene right here like pull a pc move bomb on him and get him call the sheriff police real quick and get the fuck out of there or ride home or something but it didn't go down like that i uh i lost my pack man i got punked out of the game that's right and i started to leave and hell they already punked me for my pac-man game why not punk me all the way right so that you know three or four of them follow me out and uh I'm like i'm gonna shoot whoever i don't give a shit you know what i mean because this is like the third or fourth time that i really knew that i was getting the dog shit beat out of me like i said almost all the fights that i had been in before prison i had lost <laughs> they were never equal numbers but i lost you know what i mean they're all mine back ones i lost one to a lock and a sock uh but you know my teeth are my teeth man so these fellas do all right from occasion if they have to, you know, and I hate when I have to. And I like, I do like to fight because every man does, you know, I mean, it, it feels good to let that aggression out. Ah, whatever. So I like to fight, but uh, I don't like to clown around, you know, and because my homeboy, his name's Bernie, he's from. Uh, uh, Simi Valley and he's like one of the baddest dudes out there you could catch him on Instagram and he's like I'll train you I'll train you badger like I'm like nah man I, I don't got the win for that shit anymore uh, if I, I'm not really about fighting anymore you know what I mean if I need to I'll let the, let it out on the bag uh, whatever the case may be anyway I'm jumping around right now and I'm, I won't be doing this when I go to Patreon I'm gonna do it more professional I will have it laid out as to how I'm gonna tell the story but I just want to get back into this and let you guys know how I got to Bullhead City, Arizona. So now I'm at my grandma's, mind you. I'm going to this, you know, predominantly black school. I'm leaving at 10 to 3 every day. It's already understood, you know, the quiet thing with the security guards. Uh, I'm bouncing, going home. I get caught at 7-Eleven. I leave. The bloods follow me outside. And... I'm getting ready to get got. I already been punked out of the Pac-Man. Now they're going to want my shoes or whatever else they're going to fix and take. I don't recall what it was back then. You know what I mean? I didn't wear no jewelry. I didn't bring no attention to myself that way or anything. Uh, but whatever leads to whatever. And we're getting busy, right? So I pull the little zip gun out. And I go to shoot someone. I just, bah! You know what I mean? I just let it off. They hear that. And they fucking scatter. Bah! You know what I mean? Um, I guess I actually had got one of the dudes that towards the back of the leg I had just braised his leg it was a flesh wound is what you'd call it but I'm thinking yeah they're gonna leave me alone now they know I ain't fucking playing you know that's not how that went down so my grandparents they sold Queensway to fashion slender now all those you know they were just uh the blacks were her people, basically, you know, and they were always respectful to me at every party we went to and all that. But 
the neighborhoods were dangerous back then, you know what I mean? Like, real dangerous. It was, it was just how it was. Dudes riding around with blood bandanas, crip bandanas, all that shit. And here I am. I'm not fitting in anywhere. See, and I've always felt that way, that I wasn't fitting in anywhere. So, like I said, I uh, that, that goes down. And not much long after that, my grandparents' cat was nailed to our door. You know, uh, I was kicking it with this black kid named Dane. My my grandma's best friend is her, his grandson. Uh, they were black, and they were in business together and all that. And I'm kicking it with Dane. They did all kinds of fucked up shit to him, too. Like, they burned a cross at his house. Um, anyway, they killed my grandma's cat and nailed it to our door, you know, after I did the gun sh the little zip gun thing and I'm thinking man things are about to get fucked up you know what I mean like I was never allowed to leave anywhere back then I'd stay at home uh you know I mean I'd, I back then I was trying to figure out any kind of niche where I would fit in and I didn't fit in anywhere you know and I don't know if it was the neighborhoods I was going to what the deal was uh I just knew that I didn't fucking fit in anywhere, man. And I always felt that way. My parents fucking didn't really seem to like me too much. Um, I was always getting in trouble. Uh, you're going to find that out too, man, because some serious shit went down. Um, and if they had cameras, shot have been washed up way early, you know. Um, so my grandma calls my uh, mom and tells him, man, he can't be staying here either. And they're like, well, we, you know, I got to give up my job. We got to move again because of him and blah, blah, blah. So I ended up going to Mission Hills and go, living over there, going to Porter Junior High. Uh, anyway, I'm going to school there and I'm doing the same shit, man. Everywhere I went, I took me with me, you know. I'm smoking weed with the kids, um, huffing glue. Now I'm bringing all these essay tricks that I know about huffing glue and, you know what I mean? I kicked it with some blacks when I was down there in the Highland area, so I knew that they're Stilo. And, uh, I, but not all these kids, these white kids. Now I'm in more, a little more where I fit in in Mission Hills, but by now I'm already fucked up to where I just don't feel I fit in anywhere. Now, granted, I'm hanging out with uh, more white kids at the time, but uh, this is where the racial line actually started, I guess you could say. It was sort of just pushed on me, you know, by, and it wasn't anything that I did, I didn't think, because uh, I tried to be cool and fit in wherever I was, you know, as we all generally do. But uh, what happens is my grandparents, they do some, they go to Laughlin and... They ended up buying my parents a chunk of property up there, and not in Laughlin, but in Bullhead City, a chunk of property up there and uh, a mobile home. So my dad goes up there, my stepdad, you know what I mean? My step dick, whatever, goes up there and he gets a job, comes back, and all of a sudden we're all moving to Bullhead City, Arizona. And that's how I ended up in Arizona. So basically my family had to move because of me. Now, Bullhead City, Arizona was the right spot for a cowboy like me. You know what I mean? I was having long haired river boy, you know, uh, 126 degrees outside running around barefooted. You know what I mean? Just, it was the right spot for me, you know? Uh, chasing lizards and rattlesnakes and bobcats and coyotes and horses and you know hunting right from you know we lived between needles california and bullhead city arizona at a place they used to call the s curve and there were still wild horses back then and me and my brother would if you caught a horse and you took it to the state you'd buy you could buy the horse for 10 bucks boy i got a fucking story that some of this shit you guys are gonna be like nah this shit ain't true but i'm telling you you can't make this shit up man <laughs> you cannot make the shit that i'm gonna be telling you up it was my fucking life in a in a nutshell man and uh if i was trying to live that way in today's society i wouldn't make it no chance no way no how you know uh rest in peace mike swanson uh tom portwood 
Frog, Rana, uh, you know, like all my homeboys that I'm saying now, James Reith, you know, they're all rest in peace, and that's why I'll bring their names up. But let me tell you, we was a fucking motley crew, man. And then my stepbrother shows up. Uh, he's like two years older than me, and he shows up, and... Man, we put our parents through hell. We put that city through hell. Uh, you're going to hear about crimes that, you know, I, I uh, <laughs> there's no statute of limitations on, you know, long before I was ever involved in any kind of prison, you know. And I'm going to share my story, and hopefully my story is going to keep somebody off the streets and in a bed. That's my hopes. Um, I'll be releasing... Uh, a part each month on Patreon. It'll be it'll between convict and shoe levels, depending on what, you know, what I put out there. Um, as far as Patreon goes, I'm going to be dropping some stuff here. I'm just got to go pick the material up. It's at uh, Magic's house for, you know, them snowflakes and the tough guys. I got some good stuff for you guys as well. Uh, a lot of funny shit, man, you know. You know, I don't know if you guys remember my boy Jim Trino, but uh, I've got tons of stuff with him that I'm going to be putting out there for the $2 level and uh, for the tough guy, the $10 level. Um, I'm going to tell you, though, now you guys are going to want to step up and, and not miss this story if you're with me at all, you know. Um, and like I said, you're probably going to think some of this shit was made up or bullshit, but you cannot make up the stories that I'll be telling you. Um... I'm looking forward to it, you know. Uh, my homeboy asked me last night, because one of our other homeboys, rest in peace, just uh, was murdered, and, you know, I was kicking it with him, and we were talking about, you know, where we are in life today, and he works for the studios, and he was all excited that I got in on the studios. Last night was my first gig actually working for the studio studios, and... He was all excited, and like at midnight, I went to his house, and we, you know, kicked back, had some tea, and we're discussing all the shit. He just got through, he won't come on the channel, and I can't say his name. He did uh, 10 years in the feds. He met Herc there, and uh, he got set up in that biker sting out here that happened where the undercover cop was a biker, um, buying dope you know and he got caught up in that so but i was over there and he's like man does it ever feel like you're debriefing and i'm like look you know who i talked to we we made another phone call and he ended up talking to my boy for an hour or so after i left uh he's in the shoe he's doing you know three life sentences he's never coming home let's just put it that way he's the one that i take to the, i took to the concert and i do stuff like that with from time to time, and I love him with all my heart. You know what I mean? I'll always love him. And, uh, I'm like, nah, man, and if my story could keep just one kid from doing a fucking life sentence, or, you know, somebody from picking up and making, you know, like, I, Richie, I mean, uh, hey, my boy, you know that I... We, he, he, everybody out here knows my stilo, what my goal is today, you know what I mean? Because like I said, my my other homeboy who's trying to still be with the life of 42 years old, they're like, what happened to the guy that I used to hear tales about? You know, I, I grew up on all your stories. And man, that dude survived and he ain't trying to return to prison. I'll tell you the same story every time, my boy. And you know I love you, homeboy. And I know you're watching this. And, you know, you got a break recently. Um... He ran with a click that, you know, we weren't cool with inside, you know, uh, we'd consider them enemies at the time. When I was in, that's what they were to us. We were not, we did not run together. And, uh, the, the thing is closing. Anyway, I survived. That's what happened. And I tried to turn, I'm trying to turn my life around and live in a positive area. And you'll hear some of the things that I've done then be like, man, how did you ever make it back? But even in the program, it says, uh, even those with mental illnesses or whatever have the capability of turning their shit around if they have the willingness and are capable of being honest, you know, and that's where it lies with me today. So 
I try as being as honest. I don't have no secrets. I don't hold no. I don't hold no tales, you know, uh, as far as that goes. I'm, I'm an open book, man, and I don't, I do everything I can in the program. I try not to turn down any kind of program requests. If it be to be a speaker at a meeting, uh, to come talk at an IOP, intensive outpatient, anything along those lines, I don't turn down ever, you know what I mean, unless there's something else in, in come up. But as far as the, t the show goes, it is what it is, man. I'm using it to helps help people that's it that's all you know i i get i do some gas money here and there but let me tell you i'm not profiting much of anything let me tell you that and people know people know you know what i mean a tenth of a cent per view and that's if you guys watch commercials come on and these commercials are just getting ridiculous they're like two hours long for a five minute video what is youtube trying to do by the way anyway Come join us, man, on Patreon. Not tomorrow night, by the way. I'll be doing a live. Um, I'm going to say at 7 o'clock California time. I'm going to go live. We'll be on there. You guys, uh, I got some cool stuff coming up, man. We got some, we got uh, people working on, you know, clothing line. Just whatever I can do to, to continue to to prosper and you know help other people come off the streets and just clean up dust up throw a razor on their face and get a little job and some positive mental attitude around them and maybe do what i'm doing you know and i'm not doing anything spectacular except for living correct today i want that known uh, i i'm not full of pride and ego and all that although it shows up from time to time anyway nothing but love and respect to the tribe I look forward to doing this. I'm very nervous about doing it, making my life an open book. Uh, but those that are, you know, these stories are to be sold, not told, like I said, man. So those that are c paying to come over there ain't going to have smart-ass shit to say. And they're probably going to understand that all the things that I did, I needed to do to become who I am today. I wouldn't trade any of them. And I did some fucked up shit, let me tell you. But I wouldn't trade any of that today because I am who I am as a result of all that stuff. So tomorrow night, seven o'clock, um, tell a friend, man, come on, grab some popcorn, sit down, let's bullshit. You know what I mean, I'll answer as many questions as I can, as long as they're legit. And I look forward to seeing you, man, tomorrow night. And I really look forward to seeing you on Patreon and just filling you in on who and what I was, you know, and where I'm trying to go, you know? So nothing but love and respect to the entire tribe. I appreciate all you guys. Uh, check out Zoe, you know, check out, you know, 70 Life, man, turn that shit around. That's spectacular. Anyway, I know something's going to happen. I didn't put it on airplane mode, so the phone's going to ring or something, and the battery's going to die anyway. So nothing but love and respect. Shot to the entire tribe. I'll see you tomorrow night at 7, and let's enjoy this together.